Okay, boys and girls, I'm back in the woods, and so are the mosquitoes. So hopefully you don't mind me swatting them off every once in a while. And hopefully the mic does a pretty good job at not picking up the mosquitoes. I know that was an issue last year for many people. The real reason we're making this video is to talk about five survival tips from my experience, hopefully in five minutes. Okay, let's jump right into it. Now, as always guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and the Instagram to see more behind the scenes content. Now, let's talk about some survival tips in five minutes from my experience. Now, in this video, there's a lot of five minute or you know survival tips, tricks, videos that go over a lot of handy dandy things. I wanted to make this a little bit more experiential and talk about my experience and why I do some of the things I do and why I think you should too. Okay, so to start off the five tips is going to be the four focuses of survival. Now, these are the four primary focuses of survival in any condition, any weather, and any environment. And these are actually really more than survival, just the basic needs of humans in general. And the first one or the two that kind of go hand in hand are going to be fire and shelter. And ultimately, these are going to be the most important components to survival especially most especially in inclement weather or inclement conditions things like snow cold and uh, extreme heat these are going to be uh, very important maybe not fire as much because that will heat you up but shelter certainly is going to be very key in hotter environments or hotter conditions and uh, even fire will be important because most of how you're going to get your water and your food at least safe water drinkable water and food eatable edible food is going to be through cooking it or boiling it so that's essentially how uh that fire is going to be a keystone in survival for those reasons. So the next two, of course, are going to be water and food in that order. So ultimately, in that order, you're going to want fire, shelter, water, and food. And ultimately, food is the least important, but yet still very important. You definitely want to make sure that you get it if you can but you certainly can last for at least four days, if not more, uh, without food. And oftentimes when it comes down to true survival situation, when it comes down to true survival situations, you'll likely be found before you end up dying of starvation. May not feel like it, but you probably will. Okay, so those are the four focuses of survival. The next point is going to be practice makes perfect. This is a point that I try to stress and showcase in a lot of my videos, a lot of reviews, and a lot of my content as a core is that you really do have to use your equipment and use it often, especially if it's going to be stuff or equipment, whether it's hatchets, saws, knives, axes, whatever you plan to use in a survival situation, you better be comfortable with it and practice regularly. This is something that I've largely grafted from my shooting background where in self-defense shooting uh, you know you want to make sure that you practice with whatever handgun you're going to carry it could be a revolver it could be a semi-auto it could be many different types of guns it could even be a desert eagle but the most important component is that you practice and practice often so that you don't lose those skills because things like fire starting things like feather sticking uh, and even shelter building are some my perishable skills that if you're not regularly keeping your muscle memory up you'll have to start from you'll have to start afresh and it will not be as easy so that is the next point okay the next one is going to be the next one is going to be two is one and one is none now this is a common survival saying that a lot of people hear and i kind of want to actually expound upon it be from my experience now of course the traditional notion or concept of two is one one is none is that you should always carry a backup tool so that if you lose your if you lose one tool you'll still have a backup tool or another tool that can do a similar job now similar to what you guys have seen through my psk videos and through the fact that I carry three tools on me uh, as we'll get into in a little bit uh, essentially it's important to not only have backups and to be reasonably redundant with your uh, equipment choices especially with things like fire with cutlery and a handful of uh, very critical points on the kind of five c's if you will 
So it's important to have backups, but also have different backups. So what I mean is with my personal survival kit, I have a lighter, I have matches, and I have a ferro rod, all of which kind of dominate their own kind of area. Now, they all start fires, and that's the entire point of each one, but you might say a lighter is probably the easiest to use and easiest to start fires with, but it is also probably the most fragile, whereas the ferrocerium rod is probably the most durable, but probably requires the most skill to use. So each one has their own unique attributes and can help you in different ways and in different environments. So in some environments, you might choose the lighter. In some environments, you might choose the ferro rod. In another way, with having a hatchet, a saw, and a knife, you can balance those tools. So there are some tasks that a knife will do better than a saw. There are some tasks that a saw will do better than a knife or a hatchet better than a knife and a saw better than a knife and a saw. So essentially, not only is it important to have redundancies within your kit, but I try to make sure that these are diverse uh, offerings so that each one can do different jobs better. Now, once again, a knife, a saw, and a hatchet will all cut through a piece of wood. It's not necessarily that they are entirely different, but similar to having three different types of fire starting methods, they all kind of do their own thing best, but they all do at the core have their own or have the same general philosophy. Okay, so this next one is kind of similar to point two, but I think is different enough to make its own valid reason. And that is learning is key. Now, when I talk about learning, I don't just mean a lot of people think, you know, oh, I'll just go read a survival handbook or go, you know, learn survival. But when I mean that learning is key, this means that in survival or when you practice survival or when you want to get prepared for survival, you should be learning. And learning not only means reading books, things like Bushcraft by Boris Kohansky or different survival textbooks. So the militaries of the world have different, actually pretty cool and fascinating survival books to read and to glean from. And while they may not be the most applicable all the time because they are militaristic, they usually have a few good tips in there. So reading and learning in that way is a very good, that kind of traditional sense of learning. But the other way that I've really found and really grown my own skills for survival and bushcraft crafting is by testing and experimenting. It's about saying essentially, what can I do? You know, go out with a knife and a saw and say, can I go out there and can I build a shelter with just these two tools? Or what would it take me to do certain tasks if I limited myself to just having a knife or just having a saw or, you know, having some combination of tools that is not optimal. And so I think a lot of progress and a lot of learning is done simply by testing and experimenting. And this is one of the best ways and one of my favorite ways personally because it is a lot of fun to push yourself into circumstances that are not optimal so you can learn and grow your skill set. Okay, the last tip is going to be becoming unstoppable. Now, I kind of debated about what I really wanted for the last tip, and I kind of debated even having just a mindset as a tip because it's very easy for me to teach skills or even tell you that you should have, you know, a knife and a saw as opposed to just a knife. It's very easy for me to uh, explain these concrete uh, ideas and not abstract ones, but truly when it comes down to survival, the biggest and most important tip that I can share with you, greater than, you know, showing you how to harvest some natural piece of, you know, tinder that five other people on YouTube have already done, is to express that you really have to gain, like the biggest or largest, uh, you know, survival tip that I can give you is the mindset of becoming unstoppable, unconquerable, and just perseverance uh, at the core. And because that's the entire thing. I mean, when you hear survival stories all the time, you hear about, you know, people do going seven days without food or breaking their leg and crawling to some, you know, some unknown distance to be found. And what it really all draws back to is just your will to live and your ultimate perseverance. And this is something that I can't really, you know, teach as a skill. I can't make YouTube videos about how to become unstoppable. Um, you know, I can 
you know, try to sprinkle in tips and say, hey, you should maybe carry some gear. This would help you. But ultimately, it goes back to having this mindset that you're not going to stay down no matter what. You will find a solution. And that is something that is very hard because it's a very abstract idea. It's not concrete at all. And you have to find it within yourself to keep pushing and keep surviving because a lot of people when they do end up dying from survival or in survival situations and granted if there are some things out of your control like if you crash a plane and you die in the crash you don't necessarily have the most control over that but a lot of times when people have survived for days on end they end up dying not because of any one survival failure but they give up or they lose the will to live now once again this it may be aided in certain extents and I think oftentimes of, you know, Into the Wild or Chris McCandless in his way that, you know, he didn't necessarily, he was the most coherent when he died, at least to our knowledge, you know, he ingested some type of poisonous substance that uh, degraded his life or his ability or his will to live. But even when you think about someone like Chris McCandless and how with very minimal equipment and even more minimal survival knowledge, lived essentially in a survival situation for as many months as he did on top of that also living in the winter time in Alaska uh, it's pretty crazy that he lived as long as he did and was as effective as he was and in the end uh, you know I don't want to say that he out and out gave up or ran out on will to live but likely there were contributing you know either toxic or poisonous um, substances within his body that essentially aided in giving him uh or giving helping him give up on the will or helping him give up life or giving up on the will to live so as these mosquitoes get very aggressive <laughs> So essentially, this is uh, the last point that, you know, it's very uh, hard for me to explain it, but essentially you can do great things and you can live much longer and survive much harder environments than you think you're capable of. It's just about not giving up and not giving in. So that's the last survival tip. And I know that these are not traditional survival tips. I'm not telling you how to harvest birch bark from a tree or how to drain sap, but these are all things that are readily available on YouTube. And I've watched many of those videos myself. I'm very well aware of how to do them. I could show you how to do them, but I think ultimately I would rather explain but I think ultimately I would rather explain to you guys, you know, some, some of the kind of lessons that I've learned from wilderness survival in Alaska from my experience. So, so anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video as always. God bless. And I'm out.